Hello, welcome to Skyward Hacks. Today we'll talk about Hazelcast and how to set up a two node cluster. So Hazelcast is a great, great in-memory database in my IMDJ, they market themselves as an in-memory data grid. And I'll show you how to install a cluster in, on two different machines and with settings that uh, try that in production and um, it works great. And we'll also enable the REST interface so you can use HTTP, curl or whatever integration for populating and retrieving artifacts from the from the data grid. Right, so this is the basic architecture. Um, you have your applications app here and you can communicate using HTTP REST. And then you hit a load balancer of sorts. Uh, I have employed Nginx, but of course there are whatever works for you. Um, and then what we'll focus on today is the Hazelcast 1 and the Hazelcast 2. Uh, there are two separate machines depending on, is, you know, on separate physical hardware, wherever they may be, and they communicate between themselves. So that's a great feature of Hazelcast. They all know about each other and they work out uh, which node has entries that the other doesn't have, and then it retrieves and they ensure that everything is in sync. So you can take down one instance and the other one receives a lot of traffic, a lot of data, and then you can bring up the other node that was down and then within a few seconds or even less, it has everything that the other one had. Right, so we'll start off by installing Hazelcast. Uh, they provide an apps repository uh, with and it's signed with keys and everything. So you can actually install Hazelcast and configure it just as you would do with Apache or Nginx or MariaDB. So there's a really, really nice distribution there. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's do that. So here I have two machines. Uh, on the left hand side, that's Hazelcast 1. On the second, right hand side, it's Hazelcast 2. And just to show that I haven't haven't cheated, um, there is no Hazelcast installed, right? So I'll do hit apt install Hazelcast and install Hazelcast. Right, so now we have Hazelcast installed. The, the, the systemd units ha haven't been enabled, um, which is fine because we need to configure it them first. So what we'll do then is to figure out the IPs here. All right, so yeah, first off, when you start reading and researching Hazelcast, they, there's a lot of talk of the auto discovery mechanisms that they do have. Uh, they have for, if you run on the same machine, it's great, it just auto discovers other nodes you will have on the same machine, but you can also discover them in uh, AWS context, or Kubernetes context, Azure context. Um, but there's also uh, notes on on their website that it says, uh, not that using auto detection is not recommended for production. Um, which uh, I found a bit uh, surprising, but I, I am sure there are good reasons for it. But um, it, it, to me, it was one of the killer features starting out with Hazelcast and then when employing it in production, I was like, oops, maybe we shouldn't do that after all. Well, anyway, we will use what they call TCP discovery. Of course, regardless of the discovery mechanism you use, everything is communicating using TCP IP. So to call the TCP IP connectivity or something, that would be stupid. Um, but at least that's, if you looked up in documentation, it's called TCP discovery. Right, so what we need to do then is to locate the IP um, of our different machines. And we need to do, uh, your machine may have more than one network interface. So on this machine here, it's very simple. There's only one loopback interface, the LO here. And then there is one which communicates uh, on, the, on the KVM, uh, which is the virtualization technology I use in this machine. Um, but in a different context, if you deploy, say, Kubernetes, you might have uh, a third device, and you must be just sure that you pick the right IP. Um, <clears throat> So for this one here, so this is Hazelcast 1 and this has 100 at the end. Just notice that, 100, notice that. And then uh, number two has 101, right? That, so that's all we need to think about for a moment. Um, <clears throat> then you open the configuration file, which is in, 
a strange location, so it's not under slash etc like everything else in Unix. It's an user lib. It's just the way it is. So let's let's do that in Emacs. And the things you need to change. So cluster name, obviously, pick some whatever you, whatever you want. The name just needs to be the same on both machines. And then it uh, there's a setting here uh, that you may be tempted to touch, and that is whether or not it should listen on all interfaces, all network interfaces, or only uh, the one. And here it's a bit confusing because the documentation says it's it's loopback interface. However, it it's not necessarily it it means only the one you have defined here. And so what I found to work the best is that you then take um, the interface on which you want to communicate. So to me, that's just the, the KVM interface here. And then I don't need to bind. I don't need to set this one to true. Uh, this will just mean that when I start Hazelcast, it will just bind to this IP. Um, and that's the end of it. And then the second thing I need to do is here, you can see that it's the, so, so here it's configured all the diff, different discovery mechanisms. And what we need is TCP IP enabled. That just means the discovery is kind of less magic, I suppose. And you give the IPs to the different members of the cluster. And so here I have to do the IP on the network on which I want to communicate. It doesn't work if I do 127.0.0.1. It will get confused. That's my experience. And um, and then I mentioned the other one as well. And then the default part, Hazelcast will then try out the default part. So it will start off with 57.0.1 and then works itself out offwards. Um, so we use the standard ports here, so no need to enter the parts. Um, that's enough for discovering each other. So let's just do that for the other one as well. Um, here, and I go down to the interface, and then I want 101. And then let's see what's the member list. Yeah, here we go. So this also is just list two. <coughs> Excuse me. So this here is thin enough for them to find each other. So let's try to enable the system D units and um, and start start the servers. So I will enable Hazelcast. I will start it. If I can spell correctly, I will enable it and I will start it. Start Hazelcast. And if you now view the log file, you should see that this they discover each other. There. So here on the right hand side, you can see the Hazelcast 2 instance. It has now found the other one as well. And then it says, this one here, this is me. It says less. And then it says the opposite on Hazelcast 1. It says, I'm me, I'm me. This is the one, and this is the other one. All right, so now our cluster is up and running, which is great. And so this one's through. Important here is the interface. And you list all the members by IP. Uh, it's possible, the documentation says it's possible to use host names as well. I don't have good experiences with that. I have found that they cannot find each other. Maybe it's something with my network, I don't know, but IPs, that's for something I can vouch for that does work. Now, we are we need to enable the REST API. So Hazelcast has a great REST API, um, and we need to add kind of a, yeah, this setting here for it to be, actually be able to start it. So, um, so, I will just use Vim just for a moment and I will navigate to the REST API and I will say that was a lot more than what I 
wanted. Okay, there you go. And I'll open the old one as well, and then REST API. Okay, so my clipboard is uh, endpoint group, and then it should be called data. I can just spell it out as well. And data will touch that. And then I can restart Hazelcast, and I'll, I'll restart Hazelcast here as well. And now I should be able to use the web, uh, the REST API. So let's try that. So I did that and we found the members and now you can test drive it. So there is a great REST API. You can access then any of the nodes. So here, as I showed earlier, you will typically have a load balancer in front of this so you don't have to access an individual node. But for testing purposes and for illustration purposes, this is great because it really shows that you can just populate one of the nodes and everyone will get the data instantly. So here I choose to use context play. You can, you can write any content type, use any content type you like. Application JSON is naturally very popular. Um, and my data here is then just te plain text as well. And this here you can see the map name, that's typically your, <clears throat> your, your cache as you would initialize it in your source code. Um, so, so you know, if this was a, a fruit application, this would typically be fruit names, and and this here would then be the 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 end the name of the entry in in your fruit database. Okay, so <clears throat> we'll just copy that. Uh, the dash dash include that says include the response headers from from Hazelcast. So so. If everything is all right, it says 200 OK. And I can now query, just do a get. I can just do a curl on that address. I'll just include the response header so you can see everything that's going on. And it says, hello world, back. And there was no new, no <clears throat> sorry, no new line there. So that's why it's all in the same lane. Now, I did, I query now, Hazelcast 1, which is 100. So let's try to query the other one, Hazelcast 2, here on the right-hand side, um, which is 101. And let's say so there's something funny going on. Uh, Hazelcast, yeah. The other one, that should have the date as well, and it does. Right, so that's really, really cool. So now I can try to... Let's add a new line and see if that works at all. No, it doesn't. Let's say there's something with my terminal emulation here, which is slightly off. And I can, you know, replace that with a, with a dot dot. So it's it's a little different. And I did that against 100 Hazelcast 1. One, now I query Hazelcast 2. And you can see the changes are present here as well. Um, so if I very hundred that has to change as well. So very very cool. Um, so let's say that I I can take I can take number two down, and now I I make a change. Say I create you know a completely new entry called bar. Yeah, but. Right, and I can I can query that from um, from um, Hazelcast one. That's fine. It's there. If I do query then Hazelcast two, it's also there. Did I stop it? Okay, it was my terminal that play, played tricks on me. Okay, so it failed to connect, that's very good. That's what I wanted to show. It's not, uh, it wasn't running. So it was only the terminal playing tricks I was actually querying Hazelcast 1, not Hazelcast 2. 
Okay, so now hazel gas is not ready. So I'll start it up now. And as you can see, um, it sets up the connection to number one and it immediately gets the data that it doesn't have that w was added while it was down. So if I now query it, uh, I get a 200 back and I have the data that was written to Hazelcast 1 while Hazelcast 2 was down. Very, very cool. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's very easy to get this up and running and get it working. So this is what I did. I queried both for Hello World. I, I posted this to one node. I could query both nodes and I got the same result back. It means that replication is happening between the Hazelcasts. So in summary, don't use auto discovery in production. Uh, use TCP discovery and um, only bind to one interface. Then you don't need to do the wildcard bind to all interfaces. And it also uh, iron out a few bugs that I encountered or bugs or at least surprising behavior that I cannot explain uh, or find logical in any way. So bind, only bind one interface, use TCP discovery and and then use the bind interface in the member list and then doing that the nodes don't get confused that messages that they broadcast themselves are not also targeted to themselves and so on if you if you want to delve further uh, there's great documentation um on the hazelcast documentation website and here are linked to the discovery members by tcp documentation so I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you around next time.